So I'm out here in Phoenix, Arizona visiting family and I thought what a perfect opportunity to try the Waymo One self-driving vehicles. So they're only available in San Francisco and Phoenix. I applied to uh, take part in it a few months ago, finally got the approval and here I am now I'm in Phoenix. So I thought I'd give it a try. Now my hotel is actually in Scottsdale so it's a couple miles away from their service area. So I took my Ionic 6 and I drove down here a couple miles down the road to a health spa or something that I found on the map and I'm just gonna I've called the car, I'm just gonna get in the vehicle and drive it for a few miles or let it drive me for a few miles and just kind of see what it's like to ride in a fully autonomous uh, self-driving vehicle. Okay, so the first thing is how do you get one of these to pick you up? Of course, it's through the Waymo One app. Now, anyone that's used any kind of ride sharing apps before will see the familiarity here. You enter your pickup and destination address and uh, then you basically are gonna request the car. It tells you the cost and gives you an estimated wait time. While you're waiting for the car, you can change the identifier that appears on the top of the car to make it easier to find in a sea of Waymos if we ever get to that point. There's also some safety and other information that you can read about while waiting. So it looks like we're about nine minutes out here. Let's see what happens when the car shows up. And there it is, it has arrived. So I'm not sure what to do here, but we're gonna try to figure it out. It's a Jaguar with lots of radar and everything on it. And now I'm going to go to the app to try to get in. Okay, I have unlocked the doors. I'm going to go ahead and sit in the front seat. Okay. Good to see you, Sky H. Okay, we are in. I'm probably going to have to fasten my seatbelt here. It's calling me by my Google name, Sky H. And. Very nice vehicle. And I can just hit the start ride button, I guess. Hello from Waymo. As <laughs> we get going, just give us one minute to cover a few riding tips. This experience may feel futuristic, but the need to buckle up is the same as always. So keep your seatbelt fastened, please. If you're traveling with little ones or expecting, Please see the seatback card for more information. We'll do all the driving, so please don't touch the steering wheel or pedals during your ride. Okay. We may use interior cameras, check on riders, improve our products, and more. But our microphones are only on when you're connected to rider support. So sing your heart out. We can't hear you. <laughs> you can also use the app or passenger screen to speak to a rider support agent at any time. In the rare case of an emergency, please keep your seatbelt fastened and remain in the car unless there's an urgent need to exit. Rider support will connect with you and provide assistance. Finally, relax and thank you for riding with us. Okay, so it just kind of took me on a little trip through the parking lot here while it's giving its little safety uh, safety information and that and now i don't know what it would do if you're picking somebody off on the side of the street if it would like go slowly or something somewhere but uh it says i'm going to be nine minutes at the destination that i selected which was just sort of a random destination and it's uh it's a little surreal uh it's kind of bizarre uh i've been in a self-driving shuttle before in las vegas many years ago uh, there was one in downtown fremont uh, but there was also like another person in there in case there was a problem and there was like six or seven other riders with me But now I am uh, literally the only person in this car and uh, It's okay right now because uh, we're in a parking lot, but as we get out to the street I am not quite sure how I'm gonna feel uh, For the backseat viewers uh, or sit people sitting back here. There is a little map back here, too So I noticed the vehicle there All right, here we go. Not sure what that, oh, that's the turn signal. I guess we are turning, so it has turn signal on, makes sense. We're right about at the Hyatt Regency in Phoenix here. Ganey Village, I guess it's called. Okay, here we go. Thirty 
35 miles an hour in a 40 zone. Let's see what it goes up to. We got a green light here. Oh, when we're turning. Okay. Oh, what is it doing? It's taking me into some private. Okay, that was interesting. It took me into Vaquero Drive at Ganey Ranch and just did a U-turn. Um, I guess we're going left. Okay, so maybe it was supposed to do that because I know I'm from California. You can do U-turns most places, but there's no U-turn here. So I guess it did fine. It had to turn around and it couldn't do it that way. So, all right, I accept that, even though I thought it was kind of weird. Okay, six minutes. Going 40 miles, exactly the speed limit. In the left lane here, there's really not too many cars around me, which is making me a little more comfortable. Okay, turn signal is activated. I, I don't actually know where it's taking me. I just pushed the thing on the map, so I can't really tell you if it's uh, going in the right place or not, but I assume I'm gonna end up at Santo or something like that. Five minutes out. We're going pretty slow. 15 miles an hour here in a uh, 25 mile hour zone. Where's the speed limit sign? But uh, that's okay. Slow is good. I know the shuttle in Las Vegas went very slow and people got upset at it and they would get behind it and honk all the time because uh, this was probably like six or seven years ago when this thing was running. And uh, it did pretty good. But still, uh, it was going pretty slow. And this is, seems to be going a little bit slower. Now we're up to 25, which I think slow is kind of good in this, in this new technology. I think slow is good. Now we're getting to a major street here, or it looks like more of a major street. Scottsdale, yeah, Scottsdale Road. I think this is one of the major streets there has correctly observed the red light. There's the guy next to me uh, texting, which shows why autonomous vehicles will probably be better for us in the future. At least he's at a stoplight, but you know. We are three minutes out. I know I can turn on the music here and stuff, but I, let's see. There's a pullover button in case I wanted to Get the heck out. Play music. Christmas, pop. I believe you can play your own music, but I am not going to try to figure that out now. Let's just uh, go with pop. Looks like it's a stream from something. Very dusty. I guess there's no uh, human here to, uh, to dust things. Okay, it is going. Okay, we're going to turn this down just a little bit. No, my volume is not there. Okay. So we're going. All right, it's turning again. Turning on to Eastwood here. There are a lot of cars. Okay. Stop, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, honestly, it's. I feel pretty comfortable. It's a little disconcerting, but I feel pretty comfortable. My car has level two autonomous driving, and this is what level five or something like that. So it's like it's a, a really wild experience. Okay. I get back to that other screen. I'm good. Two minutes, okay. I'm glad my route is not taking me on too many. I, I'm, I'm glad my route's not taking me on the highway. Uh, that's probably for another day when I'll want to do that. We're on a nice little Phoenix side street here with beautiful homes and, and that, and it's going about 24 miles an hour. Almost there. Okay. Don't forget your belongings. Oh yeah, that is my sunglasses, thank you. 
For your safety, the doors will remain locked when we arrive. Pull the handle twice to exit. Okay. The first pull unlocks. The second opens the door. Okay. And then we're going to just try this on the way uh, back to my car. So I don't know if I'll get the same car or not, but we're going to try it on the way back. One minute. It's funny because I don't even really know where I'm going. I just chose a spot on the map that didn't look too far. Okay, I think this is the spot that I chose. It's 72 way. It is like safely pulled off to the side. You're here. Please make sure it's clear before exiting. I'm at this address here, which is what I did select. So all in all, a pretty impressive first ride using Waymo One. While I was a little uneasy maybe at first, I felt safe all the time. And heck, I don't even have to leave a tip. At least until our robot overlords require it. See you later.